In my last video, I bought one of the cheapest electronic drum kits available on the market today, a Carlsbro Rock 50 for which I paid about 50 quid. It's got a picture of some happy children. And today I wanted to find out what would happen if we plugged in some of the incredibly cheap pads from that kit into my TD30. So what we're going to do today is instead of using this snare drum, uh, we're going <laughs> to we're going to use this one instead, um, which is definitely not Roland. And we're going to find out what happens. Does it work? Does it make a sound? How does it record? I've got my iPad set up over there, and uh, we're just going to have a little bit of fun with it. And if it works, maybe we'll try out the tom. Maybe we'll try out the bass drum. Who knows? I mean, we could try and put a double kick on it. Right, I've hit record. Let's find out what happens. Now, what I've done is I've copied one of the original patches from the TD30, so I don't mess it up by uh, messing with it. But we're going to find out now. Let's let's get some volume on here. Okay. Wow. Now it seems to be triggering straight to the uh, the red, so it seems to be kind of basically telling me I'm playing as hard as I could. I have to play those quite hard. Even if I hit fairly softly. Seems to be maxing out that trigger. So maybe if I put my glasses on and I can see again, because I'm too vain I won't wear them when I'm recording. It's recognising it as a PD-125. Uh, let's try and see if we can find the actual one that I have, which is the PD-128. Yep, I was just seeing if they had the uh, the S, but they don't. So PD-128, okay, let's, let's just check this and see what happens when I play the snare. So you can see I'm not really hitting it very hard. And it's maxing out at 127, maximum threshold, um, straight away basically. So, whereas if I hit the tom, I have to really, really bladder it to get that same uh, same number basically. So let's, let's go back to the snare. And let's just turn down the sensitivity. Okay, cool. Um, now, let's just see how that works. So it's recognizing all my other uh, triggers here. We've got it in two. Okay, let's let's see then. Let's have a little bit of a play and see what happens. It's at this point you might be questioning, why would you actually do this? Well, to a certain degree, if you're looking to play electronic drums and you're looking to expand your electronic kit, then it's kind of good to know whether you have to buy the exact model of pad that it says you should, or whether you can get away with, you know, probably not something to this extent, maybe, especially if you have spent thousands of pounds on a TD30 or similar. But it's kind of nice to know that, let's say you just wanted something that's basically just got a trigger you know, one sound, let's say you have like a, I don't know, let's say for argument's sake, a gong, and it goes when you hit it once every 12 songs, then actually, do you need to spend four or 500 quid on a PD-128 to do that? I mean, Roland do make like small triggers, of course they do, and they're not massively expensive. But if you had an old kit lying around and just wanted to plug some pads in and just like expand your kit at home, there's no reason really why you couldn't do that, as it turns out, because it's literally a jack-to-jack -jack input, and it's literally, uh, you know, just a trigger and, and some sensors. Should we try the bass drum and find out? I'm pretty sure the tom would work, I won't do that, but let's see if the bass drum trigger is kind of usable. I've got no idea how I'm going to set this up and put a speed code with double pedal on it, but uh, we're going to give it a go. I've just remembered something. This is the bass drum trigger <laughs> for the Carlsbo Rock 50. It's not a pad. So we're going to use the tom trigger, but we're going to use it as a bass drum. And I, I don't know how I'm going to mount it, but um, we might have to get the gaffer tape out is all I'll say. Okay, here we have the tom pad. And upon reflection, this is a fairly stupid idea. But what I'm thinking is if I put the beaters on max extension, then put that on there, and just kind of tape it, then it should just about reach, I reckon. 
raise that up an inch, maybe, half an inch. It should work. Half an inch is all you need. You can quote me on that. It's not very good, is it? A snare drum stand would work. A snare drum stand would work. It's not going to work. Um, what I'm going to do is try and get a snare drum stand in there. Same as I've mounted that. But basically put it on its side. Hope I can get it low enough. Yeah. Come on. Plug him in. Oh. Without me barely touching it. it seems to be clipping. If I look at my audio waveform, the top one is kicked. Can you see that no matter how softly I go, it's automatically clipping it like that. So what I'm going to do is turn it down here because this will affect the recording level. Okay, that's better. That's within range now, at least. Even if I play it really hard. It doesn't look like there's a lot of dynamic range going on. Uh, so let's go to trigger. We've got it saying it's a KD120. Let me just check what mine is, actually. I think it is a KD120, isn't it? Oh, it's a heavy boy. Right. Yeah, KD120. So, okay, let's have a look then. I think we'll just tell it that it is a KD120, but we're going to just turn that sensitivity again right down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, see, it basically seems like it doesn't have a lot of um, dynamic range. That's better. Okay, how's that then? Okay. <laughs> right, let's try it with a the kit then, shall we? See how it sounds. Right, I've got my setup here. It sounds a bit weird in the room because the snare drum stand is actually hitting the metal radiator that's on the wall. But uh, that's not really the pad's fault. That's more my setup's fault. And also, the pad seems to be moving a little bit. But, uh, but it's okay. I mean, it's alright for a little test, isn't it?